Hi, I'm Heather Telford and this is a tutorial for Split Coast Stampers. I'm showing you how to make falling snow using masking fluid and watercolour techniques. The first thing I do is to splatter masking fluid on my watercolour paper. I'm using Winsor & Newton masking fluid and a splatter brush. You can pour some of the masking fluid out into a shallow tray or you can dip your brush straight into the masking fluid. A toothbrush works well too but this little splatter brush does a great job. You hold onto the barrel of the splatter brush which has a nail attached to it and then turn the handle and that the nail will flick the masking fluid off the bristles onto your paper. You can't really see it very well on this paper because the masking fluid is cream and the paper is cream but you'll see it when we start adding colour. I'm masking off the edges of my panel simply to define the space. I want the size of the finished panel, but you could work on the entire panel because it's uh, a block, a watercolour block, which means it's attached on all four sides. Now, I'm making a couple of masks to mask off the shape of uh, hills and one to make the shape of a moon. I'm using post-it notes, which don't pull off the masking fluid. But I've since discovered a thing called frisket paper, which I hadn't tried before. It's plasticky, so it doesn't get uh, so wet with um, once you start watercoloring. So it's probably worth a try. I didn't have it when I made this tutorial. So uh, to stamp the trees, I'm using memento inks, and these trees are penny black stamps from the Prancers set. And I spritzed both the stamp and the paper, just a little bit. I didn't want it sopping wet, but I just wanted the color to bleed a little when it stamped on the paper. Now I'm creating my own palette of Memento ink by pressing uh, the Bahama Blue stamp pad onto one end of an acrylic block and Nautical Blue onto the other end. And then I have a um, jar of water off camera and I'm just dipping my paintbrush into the water and into the ink on the acrylic block and adding it to my panel. Now it's uh, small, but you can probably already see some little uh, little flecks of white. They're the masking fluid and they will resist the ink that I'm putting on. So I'm just adding Bahama Blue first and uh, I'm adding it right in there amongst uh, the tree branches because I don't mind if the tree branches bleed a bit into the sky color because I am after the watercolor effect. So a little bit of color bleeding into other color is actually what I'm, what I'm hoping to achieve and I like that blended look. Now, I'm gonna re remove the mask at this point because the poster note does get a little bit soggy. And the rest of that heel shape, I would just paint on with the brush. Uh, you can see just up the top there under the tree, I did uh, a little bit of the poster note did come off. That's not something to worry about because there's more stamping and painting to, to cover that. But if you had some of the frisket paper, I would try that next time. I think I'm going to switch to that when I'm doing watercolor panels that need masking anyway. So... Now I'm just painting the border of my sky and then uh, adding water straight away to blend that paper the, to blend that blue color because I don't want a um, defined line on the edge of that blue color. So just lots of uh, Bahama blue first. That's my lighter blue and I want the lighter blue around the moon to make the appearance of the light from the moon and then, I'm adding some uh, nautical blue and blending that in. The, the ink is still all wet, so it blends quite nicely. And then some water to that. Now you can see that the edges of the uh, moon mask are getting a little bit soggy at this point too. So it's time to remove that. Um, it's done its job of masking the area you could paint masking fluid on in a circle to mask the moon shape too that's just a little more time consuming
Remember when you're doing watercolor techniques that the inks do dry lighter than uh, they appear when you put them on wet. So if you want a really intense color, make sure to paint more on than you think you need because it's going to dry a paler color. Now at this point, if you just want to add a little more de definition to your trees, you can just hold your mask in place and re-stamp over the top because they have bled and blended into the sky a little bit. So uh, just re-stamping over the top to give them a, a, bit of, a bit more definition and a little darker color. Now I'm ready to do the next snowbank. So I cut another mask, a little uh, different shape to the first one so that uh, there's a variety in the shape of the hills. And again, I'm going to move this mask fairly quickly after I add some ink because I, I don't want it getting soggy and tearing. So I've switched to the middle size tree from the Prancers set. There are three trees and uh, they're um, small, medium and large. And just stamping that on and then spritzing it afterwards just to get those colors to bleed a little bit. The spray bottle is off the camera, but I just spritzed that and the ink started to bleed straight away. Now the mask has done its job because it has masked the bottom of the tree. So I, I want the trees to look like they're sitting in a snowbank. So that's all I really need the mask for. In the photo step-by-step -step tutorial, uh, which is coordinated with this one, I actually leave the masks on a little longer and and paint my snowbanks with the mask on. Uh, but you don't need to do that. If, uh, if you can uh, paint the shape of a, a hill like this, which is just up and over, then you can move your mask and uh, just the paint the hill on freehand. Now, what I'm doing at this point is um, adding water and blending that color upwards, wanting to, it to fade out into nothing, really. It's the shadow behind the snowbank. So uh, I blended it with water and then dabbed at the edge with a towel to soften the edge. But there's masking fluid under there, little flecks of masking fluid that I would like to show up when uh, the panel is finished. So I add a little, uh, a little more blue color. And then time for my final tree. That's the largest tree from the Prancers set. And I've got a little, another little mask for the bottom to make it look like it's sitting in a gully. And the top of that tree is already blending into the wet paper. So I just, I'm just spritzing the bottom of the tree to make that ink blend into the surrounding area. And there I've got my tree sitting into in a bank of snow and I can paint the edges of that little dip in the snow and then blend the blue color with water just as I've done for the last two steps. Now to define the uh, edges and the bottom of my panel, just adding a little more of that Bahama blue and a little bit of nautical blue. It's not very dark, but it just uh, defines the, the edges so all four corners have a finished look to them and it will show up any flecks of masking fluid that are in that area also. Now I let the watercolor paint dry. I let it air dry rather than heat it with a tool and then I'm carefully removing my painter's tape. And what you do is you pull it at a 90 degree angle away from your watercolor paper so that you don't rip it. You can see that it bled underneath the tape, which doesn't matter for this panel because I'm trimming it. That's probably because of the masking fluid because everywhere there's masking fluid, it's raised a little bit. Okay, so I just remove the masking fluid with my thumb and fingers. You can move remove it with an eraser, um, but you can feel it under your fingers. So you just gently rub it 
until it's gone and then it will reveal all the little white flecks. It will reveal the little white spaces that it masked and you can see them in the sky there. There are not a lot of little flecks on this one. The uh, the step-by-step -step photo tutorial to go along with this has a sky which has a few more flecks in it. Of course, every watercolor panel I do is slightly different to the last. So just adding a sentiment and that was my homemade Duplo stamp positioner there. I just put in place. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you try this technique and have a bit of fun with it. And uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>